Hello, YouTube and Facebook. Jeremy three channel three thirty three coming right back at you again. Uh, I've got some interesting things coming at you in this video. I'll be throwing at you. Uh, <clears throat> one will be over uh, salvation and um, turning over the new creature and uh, in Christ and uh, putting away. Uh, the sinful lifestyle that we've uh, had before we take that up. Now, it won't be about perfectionism because the only one who walked perfect was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But uh, it's just an interesting subject material, and it could be, I think it'd be very useful for many to understand uh, when it comes to that struggle and how much less a struggle it can be. It says in the Word, if you resist the devil, he shall flee. He will flee. So, um, <clears throat> nonetheless, uh, another thing will be unbelievable, unshakable faith. Uh, we'll be going over um, the apostles in Galilee when the Lord appeared to them. And um, Peter, he asked Peter, well, he asked all the apostles um, about having their faith, and uh, Peter said, well, ask me to walk through the walk, you know, walk, walk to you, and, uh, with, and, and for a brief moment, for a very, very short brief moment, Peter actually was walked, tartan across, but he really quickly began to sink, because, and, uh, but yeah, that was more than what the rest of them had there, and uh, just, to me, that's unbelievable, unshakable faith, um, I'm talking a lot about uh, discouragement and uh, the times we live in uh, what has happened since 2016 you know those who follow me regularly follow the Jeremy channel 333 regularly they know I just kind of uh, skimp around politics and stuff there's so much uh, Evidence, censorship, and, and uh, you know, flag words. that Many talk about the algorithms and stuff. Uh, but I'm a firm believer that uh, if you give valid truth and um, you're not too divisive with your words and spread hate, you can get a lot farther. Uh, but... You know, I never would say any disinformation or anything I think would bring harm intentionally on Jeremy Channel 333. But um, it's first and foremost, it's about the Great Commission and about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. You can never go wrong there. You go with those beautiful red letters and, and what the Lord has, has spoken unto us. And uh, even the non-red, the some things Paul and the uh, the apostles spoke, you know, and then you were prophets and kings in the Old Testament, <laughs> and you met many, many scribes and writers and kings and even soldiers, you know, <laughs> you know, and Gideon, you know, just so so many different things. And um, I want to introduce uh, the Facebook groups. I haven't done that again for a while. I encourage any if you're a first timer, but maybe check out. Fun sticker photos and memes. There's officially 777 members in that group. Um, the concept there is chiefly, mainly about getting laughs, but it's also about interesting subjects, you know, like um, just historical things and uh, current events and, you know, uh, some fun things, you know, checking out yachts and, and uh, inventors and animals. Lots of a very wide range of subject material, and of course there is Christian content. There's Christian content on all my sites. There's uh, what I call the mothership. Thine will be done. Uh, 471 official members there. Um, you check it out. There's prayer in in thine will be done. There is script. Lots of, of quoted scripture. Uh, there's video content, movies occasionally, very occasionally. But I put most of my I put a lot of movies on Bible Fun Facts Group. Um, 
But I think God speaks to me in different ways with each each and every group has its own fun, serves its own fundamental purpose for the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ and Father Abba. So uh, I kind of listen to that and, and I tune in to. And I do share similar content with each and every site. There's the Michael Tate and Newsboys site. Um, it's always about Jesus first, but nonetheless, it's one of my favorite bands and my favorite singer, Michael Tate. Um, now I don't worship these people. <laughs> They put on their pants just like I do. Um, they're musicians, and I consider myself a musician. I'm not at their level, but I think you know the Lord's working with me. <laughs> you know, they sell out seats every time they, they have concerts. They're just a really blessed and talented, talented band. Put on, I've been to their co uh, concert back in, was it 2016 or 2017? Somewhere around there, I went to see a concert with a friend of mine, Michael, um, years ago. Uh, what is the Fun Bible Facts Group? It's now, I think, 90 members. Uh, it's one of my newer babies that the Lord's helped me focus on. But it's occasionally I will bring in actual Bible facts to the group. Uh, it's And it has prayer and uh, unique stuff. Um, I have more movie, Christian movie content in that one. And there's a movie, uh, uh, let's see, uh, what's that called? The Movie Forum? It was originally like... Years ago, it was designed to um, put up uh, discussions over movies. And, and now it's kind of led to uh, promoting fan-made fan films like Star Wars or Star Trek, fan-made films and some others out there, even Marvel fan-made uh, films. These are non-profit movies, of course. And any that are licensed uh, movies, fair right usage, uh, any license holders who push to promote certain particular films, we share it on that site too. And, uh, and of course, if it's not uh, licensed legally to share in the United States, then those videos get removed. So, <laughs> um, But I kind of go over that stuff with a fine-tooth comb. And, um, but I'm not the main... I have to pre-screen stuff and have to read up on it because the main it's a borrowing from another user who they put that they put that as their uh, in their quote section to cover a fair usage act. So um, <clears throat> depending on a lot of their truth too. But anyways, uh, what other uh, oh there's a Jesus Christ Prayer site. It's the newest baby. I think we're at 60-some members there. That's the youngest. <laughs> and uh, my intentions for that one was, uh, it's kind of like the Lord's talking to me. That one will be done really was intended for a lot of that too, but it's kind of branched into something a lot different the Lord has told me. And so um, I think the Jesus Christ prayer line site was kind of like, you know, I, I was kind of up in for grabs whether I was going to make any more or not because I had so many already. But uh it's kind of like uh, that voice just kept telling me, you know, I think that uh, you need something specifically based on that. And, of course, I do share similar content, Christian content materials. There's I do some of my other ones. Um, oh, there's Pastor Reverend Peter's uh, Bible study group as well. Um, that's kind of like his baby, but I help him administrate uh, or moderate uh, that group as well. I created the group specifically for him. Um, and, uh, of course, he has also made Fellowship of the Saints. And he's the creator of that. And there's like 1.3, 1,300 members. Strong. How about that? All right, enough of that. We're at nine minutes in. And I just, I thought these would this would be an interesting to, uh, thing to bring up. Because, you know, there are a lot of you, respectfully, who are on Facebook have been following, by fairness, been following uh, the individual here and in, in, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first and foremost, him first, and, and this guy here, you know, for longer than they have. So I thought that, but it's also good for YouTube uh, viewers that may not uh, use Facebook and are on the cusp, and they may think, well, you know, maybe I'd like to give it a try. And um, that goes along with another subject I have, you know. Um, the th same things that could be meant for, intended for evil 
this is something I know the Lord's been pushing on me because I kept fighting and struggling with it, so I'm going to go ahead and get it out there. Uh, like some of these sites, so many are like, you know, scornful of certain things, but they don't realize God can use it for the good too. And it's evident, and I, you know, I've seen it, and I can see him working every day I, I, on, on these things. You know, uh, every, uh, this is no bragging. There's nothing worse than a bragger. I'm bragging on God. I'm, I'm bra bragging on God the Father, Father Heaven, our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ, our God Almighty. Because He's He is our provider. He provides us well, <laughs> more than we deserve. Uh, he provides our needs. And um, that's good evidence how you can see His will, not mine. Uh, but I can see growth in all those groups I just mentioned. And um, <clears throat> I have 14 songs on my playlist now, if you go on Jeremy Channel 333 and you scroll up to the top right uh, past home and videos and go to playlist, you can now find that there's 14 songs on that, on that list now. <clears throat> so many times we often uh, um, never want to uh, think about uh, casting our pearls before the swine, you know. Uh, sharing too much TMI, too much information, uh, and just giving it up and let trust in God to deal with it. And uh, I haven't talked about a lot of these things for a long time. Of course, you know I'm also I'm splitting up things with music because um, I love it's a hobby and I and a, and a blessing the Lord has rich, richly blessed me with, and I feel. That music, um, above all, it praises God. But when you praise God, you are bringing the Holy Spirit. You're welcoming the Holy Spirit upon those who seek. And those, those who seek, you shall find. Because for only He alone can save. There's only one name of all of heaven and earth that can save. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, but I started out as a, a people and blog, vlogger or blogger. And that's what I, I still I kind of stay say with that because sometimes I feel led that to do this what I'm doing today and that is simply just giving a message. Um, my mindset I often think about what Reverend or Pastor Peter Odor Aguk what he was talking about on the subject and it, it's a really powerful thing and I believe that. Um, a lot of us often will be def will feel that feeling of defeated and stuff because the Lord says, you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. And so what a lot of us do is we get weak because we do not pray. We we don't think we have time for it. We may not pick up the word, you know. And um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in practicing what I preach. Now, honestly, I need to read the word more. Um, I, something I've re realized in 2020, I wasn't reading it as much as I should have been. And it really put put me in a bind a few times. But the Lord is faithful. <laughs> and uh, he knows the worst about us, but yet he loves us the most. Um, he, he's always there for us, and he pulls us through. Sometimes it's a timely process that comes in a perfect, his divine perfect timing. Uh, we must remember to deny ourselves and pick up our cross daily. Um Help those who may be in need, and um, just have, where is our mindset? Are you know are we focusing on things what's lovely and pure and what's above? Because <clears throat> we are far from perfect, and I can tell you, I, this man here definitely is. I'm far from perfect. Uh, I just got through watching the World War II movie Fury with starring Brad Pitt and LaShia LaBeouf, however you pronounce the, the feller's name. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I remember so many magazine articles. And, and uh, I remember there was a brief time period when that guy, that LaBeouf guy, kind of went off the rock or cuckoo's nest there for a while. And he was just saying a lot of weird, strange things. But, you know, in this movie, he's like one of the main protagonists in the tank. He's like the, he is the, um, the one of the what the Sherman tank what, was it a 60 miller maybe a 50 
50 millimeter? No. I think it was a larger shell than that. The Tiger tank was definitely much, had much more firepower, the German's Tiger tank. And they confront a Tiger tank in that movie with three, and only one comes out. You know, Brad Pitt's tank and the bus tank. They managed to get on the rear. The other tank sacrificed itself when they both was coming to flank it. Uh, but they, nonetheless, they came out victorious. But later they go on down the road after that victory to do the mission that they were actually supposed to do. And a mine takes out one of the tracks. And then they have to confront their mission, like over 300 Germans on a road, to keep them from overtaking the, the base the Americans just took not too long ago. And they put up a value fight. They lose, of course. Well, I'm sorry if I spoiled it for you, but believe me, it's not spoiling it. That movie's still worth watching. Uh, but anyways, they quote a lot of uh, Bible quotes in the movie. You know, Ad, um, Brad Pitt was adamant about God's grace in the movie and the buff. Was, he went on a lot about uh, Jesus and the Bible. But that just goes to show you just how really true, truly good these actors really are. They are really great. Because do you think that they really believe what they said? Now, I'm not casting judgment on these men. I don't know what their uh, beliefs are. Um, a man can change any day. And that was some of the things I talked about in the past, that was in the past. So, uh, And from what I heard, uh, Brad Pitt has actually done some good community things in his life. So um, certainly not casting any judgment. He, you know, As far as I know, the man could believe some of that. But I'm just saying... It just gets your um, mind thinking, you know. Uh, but that's not just, this is just figuratively, though. I'm not running these men down, you know. Because um, I say, like I say, I do not know them personally. But what I want to get to is, it's not the men and the actors, but more necessarily, but the pretenders, you know. Um, there's a lot of people that's pretty good at it. And, um, you know, like I said, I pull the wool out of my eye first, my own eye first, before I speak these things. But what I want to, what I'm trying to get at here is, um, I actually know someone very near and dear to me, close family, but I will not say who it is. But some of my other family will know. Uh, they may know uh, a lot of the scripture, but when you discuss things with them, uh, they they get out of their comfort zone real fast, and uh, they can quote it, but they don't know what it, the scripture means, and. Uh, Certainly don't want to be in that that position ever. Uh, the main thing is is you know we're not supposed to take everything by heart because the heart can even fail you. It's the word of God that we must stand upon. Um, just as Jesus told the devil when, the, when he got tempted after the forty days, forty nights of fasting, the Lord says, "Man doesn't survive on." bread alone. He has the word. So it's very important to know. Now before I go into my the second Corinthians and Matthew 14 and stuff, uh, you know, and another thing I want to remind people about these times is um, I was also been pushed to say that tell you this, do not worry about what you'll have to eat. The Lord will provide. Uh, how do I know this? These are promises of God. It's in the word. Um, the Lord will always provide, and you know, He provide. I, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I, my cup truly runneth over. But in these times, you know, the fuel prices are getting jacked back up again. Of course, uh, you know, wars probably on the brink. You know, they're going back over in Syria. All the garbage that went on that the people didn't want. It's kind of like, you know, a stink eye in the face. But like I said, I don't want to get too far into politics. But just trust in God. You know, God has, he is sovereign. He's the most high and he has the final say. And who knows what surprises he may have in store for 2021. And that goes to uh, things to look for, good things on our side. The promises of God, the word, where the Lord pretty much gives us an end game and where things lead. You know, for, hello, First Thessalonians 4 and 5, which so many people deny that Paul's scripture writing on that subject. You know, you even have in Corinthians and 
There's Amos. There's some other books in the Old Testament. Uh, Revelations 3 and 4. You know, all about rapture. Rapture and, and being caught up. Uh, we have only victory if you're a true child of God, you know. Uh, that's why, to me, it's a bit confusing why there even is another side and why they follow this deceiver and the false accuser, the devil and Satan, the Lucifer fallen angel. I, it's beyond me. But nonetheless, you know, some worship him and believe. Like the, the Lord said he, he, was, he uh, came to kill and destroy <laughs> and plunder and... Uh, He's the God, lowercase God of this world. That's just how it is. Uh, remember, I want to reminisce back to the 1980s and how much different being uh, in my youth, my preteen years, and then going into my teen years in the late 80s and the early 90s. Uh, Back then, you know, they didn't have the technology they had then. A phone was something that was on the wall and had a cord on it. Now, you could watch something like the A-Team or something like that, and they had this big, fancy bag phone in their car. But the thing was huge and it had a huge gaping antenna on it. But then, and and uh, they, from what I heard, apparently, not only was they big and gawky, but it came with a huge price to, to operate and own one of them. But you could see that in a great television series back then with Dirk Benedict. I'm a big Dirk Benedict fan. I like his his acting and stuff. He was kind of like the con man for the A team. That was his position, and uh, I think he's a lieutenant or whatever. But uh, you know, you had B. A. Baracus. Who couldn't love him? You know, he could fix anything. He was Mister Fix It, and uh, you know his the comedy. He brought a comedy aspect not only with his tough and grittiness. You know, OBA, he, he could stand up to any in a fight. He, you know, uh, he just, he was a backbone, a muscle of, of the A-team. You know, George Pappard, uh, he was the leader and he was cunning and intelligent and always had the right plans. You know, he say, I love it when a plan comes together, smoke that big old stogie. And then um, you had Howling Mad Murdoch. I can't believe the actor's name is uh, escaping me right now. But he was very good at convincing you that he 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 was certifiable crazy. But he too, like Mr. T or B. A. Baracus, he could do some really wild stuff on that show. You know, he escaped prison with uh, balloons in a chair, uh, well, garbage bags that he converted into balloons, and uh, somehow he got the helium or something, and uh, somehow managed to to get those garbage bags. Inflate it up and just get itself over the the, the, the fence or whatever. Uh, he made they made a he made a helicopter him and BA together uh, from a plane that was crashed, and they used ma scrap materials from that. And he had, had the, I don't know what the, they used was tarps or something for for uh, or parachutes or something for wings, and they was holding it together with duct tape. And some of that duct tape was rippling off and. Ripping apart as he's flying the daggone thing, but uh, you know it's great. I'm getting too carried away into that. I just really tell you how much I love the show. But you know, you could drink from a garden hose outside, uh, which you could certainly do that today. But back then, you know, you did a lot of things outdoors. You know, you, you rode your bicycles and you played football and you played in the fields and you played football in all the weather, the rain, snow. You know, and that would, for us, would made it even more interesting and fun and exciting. Um, <clears throat> of course, you had the Saturday morning cartoons. And I found out something a couple years ago was the amount of money that they shelled out for these cartoons. You know, like Voltron and Transformers and G.I. Joe. There's a lot of money, millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, more than they make most of your budgets for films, for movies anymore. So they spent quite a chunk of cheese and change for those Saturday morning cartoons. All right. Um, and a couple other things to go into is, you know, what I'm talking about, to get make it clear what I was talking about, about um, worrying and all, which, you know, you hear about and you see this stuff on YouTube about, you know, the the troubles overseas with, with the Chinese and the islands over there in, in the eastern uh, 
world and, and the, the, the conflict with Taiwan or Thailand. Then, you know, you, you have Syria and Iran and the Middle East. But just remember, you know, this prophecy being fulfilled and the Lord is sovereign and he is in control. Um, now, one thing I'll go into, then I'm going to go and pick up into the word. <clears throat> For those who want to get the meat, uh, there's, you know, I had a 78% chance of being paralyzed with my tumor removal surgery on my spine. The day I went, the 25th, to St. Mary's Hospital in Huntington, West Virginia, I could barely walk. My dad helped me get into my truck. My feet were swollen like footballs. The next thing I know, at 26, I come to, and I was told I was in, in surgery under the knife for over six hours. My doctor, uh, Juan Garcia, she successfully removed like 95% of the mass. It's the size of a baseball. She said, I think it was seven or eight centimeters. The size of a baseball. Of course, she couldn't get the whole thing. So I still have some, but the Lord is working on me and he's healing me. And I have a great doctor, Dr. Beer, uh, HIMG in St. Mary's. And he, um, he's, I've had over 20 chemotherapy sessions. I've had 17 um Radiation treatments. The Lord is looking out for me. I'm doing really well. Praise the Lord. I am a living miracle. And to give you an idea of that, the paralyzed thing, that's left 22% a chance of not being paralyzed. Can you see the, the math in that? Nearly 80% one way and 20% the other. But 78 to 22 and the Lord took that small 22 and gave me the best surgeon. She, um, she's From what I heard, she's done some many. She's even done some brain surgery. She's a very successful physician. And uh, I had good steady hands the Lord provided me with. He provided me with a surgeon that he richly blessed and gave that skill to. And she took something with really bad odds and made it seem simpler than what it would be. Now, in the hands of a lesser accomplished surgeon, or uh, it's hard telling where that would have led to. So, you know, praise the Lord or Savior Jesus Christ. I am humble and I'm grateful. But I thought I would bring this up. And I also had a, um, a bone marrow extraction surgery. I was put under for an hour for that. Um, and my, there was apparently a lot of damage done there with my bones. And they've been giving me bone uh, treatments too under the many medications I'm taking for my myeloma. But yet I'm standing here and the Lord blesses me richly with another day every day. And the, there's no uh, certainty of tomorrow except for in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, he's the most high and he's sovereign and uh, he's the bringer of life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. <clears throat> okay. We're in the 28 minutes, so I'm going to jump in and finishing. Sorry about the interruption there. The camera kind of tilted back. I do not know how it did that, but uh, okay. There we go. Okay. I think I knocked one of my markers down in there. In the middle of doing that. Okay, that's the Matthew scripture. Okay. Uh, we're in 2 Corinthians 6. New creature in Christ. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you that you also, that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. That ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he hath, for he saith, for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in any thing that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience and afflictions, in necessities, in distress, in stripes, and imprisonment, in tumults, in labors, in 
watchings and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfined, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and by good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet not yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straight, straightened in your own bowels. Now for recompense in the same I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light and with darkness? This is a, a very important thing. Uh, being unequally yoked with a non-believer um, is will not hold any prosperity in, in a marriage. Uh, that that person really needs to be a believer. They really need to be saved. And, and uh, it's it's here in the word, you know. You and I can attest to only this in my past. You know, you um, being unequally yoked. It's just going to be a fight. They they're worldly, and and uh, you're fighting with your own worldly desires and problems as a believer. We, we, the difference is you have the Lord to strengthen you, you know. But okay, and what concord? This is we're on fifteen now. What concord hath Christ with? Below, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement with the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of living God, as God hath said, I dwell in them, walk in them, and I be in their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and ye will be a father unto you, and And ye shall and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, and saith the Lord God Almighty. Okay, now we're going in finishing. We're going to turn to Matthew real quick, and I think those of you who stay patient, it's the most important part is the word. Uh, Matthew tw- fourteen, Matthew fourteen twenty two to twenty three. <clears throat> Matthew fourteen twenty two to twenty three. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before them on unto the other side while he went to while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had the multitudes had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and the evening was come, and he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Walking on the sea. And then the disciples saw him walking on the sea, and they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did this thou doubt? And when, he, and when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. And when they were gone over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out all that country round about and brought unto him all 
that were deceased and besought him that they might only touch the, the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Uh, this passage really demonstrates um, Peter had faith for none of others did. You know, of course, the Lord called him out on, you know, having a little faith. But, uh, you know, you notice the Lord put his hand and pulled Peter out of the water and, and saved him and rescued him. And, but um, you got to remember also the Lord said Peter is going to be the rock. Uh, you know, so he was made charge over the, the disciples and the apostles. So, but uh, Peter had unbelievable faith there. You know, he's like, tell me to come, Lord, on, to you on the water and I'll, and I'll come to thee. Uh, but you can, you know, that's quite a thing. Imagine you're on a sea and the waves are kind of going and the, the wind's picking up. I scare anybody. <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, I just want to close her up. Well, it's kind of messing around there a little bit. You know, I like to cut loose with the guitar just a little bit in my videos. Always messing around with it because I just love to, to do it. But uh, God bless each and every one of you. And uh, by the time you get this on Wednesday, you know, I, I say, may your Wednesday be a good, good and richly blessed day. And uh, those of you on Facebook, you can feel free to, to message me anytime, you know. Um, any unspoken prayer requests, or if you want to want to share it with me, and uh, we pray over you, and uh, uh, do not forget to like and to subscribe. Uh, I encourage any of you um, to share my content. The more I have view, as it, it works with the community, especially on YouTube, but it works on Facebook that way too. The more shares that, that are put out there, the more this channel has to grow. And, um, you know, I just, I pray, you know, that we can get a way to make this channel grow more. I'm working more on my end. Of course, I still haven't been able to open my comments section on YouTube. I'm still working on that. But I did open up my availability where others can share my content on YouTube. So, um, especially, uh, like, if everything I have is nonprofit. And that they can maybe use music or anything nonprofit wise to share. And it's about sharing the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, above all things. But I'm signing off.